This happened way back in 2005. I was 18. I was living in Uvalde, Texas, a very hey, low income neighborhood. The kind you'll find sprawled out all over the place in rural Texas when you're not right outside of a city. The closest city to me was San Antonio. I was going to some local community college Beautiful. because that's all my parents could afford for me. One of my best friends from high school, Andrew, moved to San Antonio to go to San Antonio College. He was living in some small apartment a little outside of the city with a roommate. His girlfriend would also often stay with him. Since the city's only really an hour and a half away, I would visit him all the time. He invited me this one weekend to come crash for the night. So I took my trusty old 1995 Toyota pickup truck. Nah, just kidding. The thing was a piece of crap. The gas gauge didn't even work on it. I'd have to always just keep track of when the last time I filled the tank up was. Then reset the trip mileage. I took Route 90, which was a straight shot from Uvalde to San Antonio. I was on the road at like 3 p.m. on a Friday. Dang. There was no traffic at all. I got to Andrew at a reasonable time. His girlfriend wouldn't be getting there until tomorrow, so tonight we were going to go out. We stopped at a liquor store and we drank in his apartment for a while with his roommate. Then the three of us went to this dive bar that would kind of look the other way with fake IDs. That was basically our night. We got back to their apartment around 2 a.m. after getting food. I slept on the couch. The next day would have almost been the same thing, but Andrew and his girlfriend were having issues all day. And as the two of them got drunker as the night progressed, she started yelling at him in front of me. It got really awkward and uncomfortable. <laughs> I didn't really have much to drink that day because I was already iffy about staying the night with her there. I eventually decided I would just head back home. I said goodbye to everyone and started my journey home. It was very late at night. I want to guess midnight, maybe a little earlier. Route 90 was deserted at this time, so I would fly or fly for my pickup standards. But suddenly the engine started sputtering. I felt my heart completely drop. I realized I forgot to fill up the tank. I slowed down, but it was too late. The engine cut. I pulled to the side of the road, and tried starting it a few times, but it did no good. I took out my cell phone, which was equally as shitty as my truck. I tried to get a signal. I couldn't even call for help. I tried to get a signal. Oh, wow. No shot. I couldn't even call for help. That is terrible, I had to man. just put my hazards on and hope a good Samaritan would pass. No. You wouldn't believe how long I sat in the side of the road before seeing headlights. I waved my arms as the car approached, but it zoomed past me, ignoring me. Yeah, like. This happened again after another 10 minutes or so. If we don't know if it's a setup or not. I was to feel hopeless. Like, maybe I should just sleep in my car and wait till sunrise. Sleep in the car wait till sunrise, bro. That's what I was going to do. I got inside my car, took the key out of the ignition to cut the battery, and just angled my seat back to go to sleep. I would hear the occasional car zooming past like once every 10 minutes, but it didn't feel worth waving people down in the dark. It seemed sketchy for myself and to the people in the cars, but when I was starting to actually drift away to sleep, a car door closing from behind me woke me up. I looked in the rearview mirror and saw a car pulled up behind me with its headlights off. I turned around now to get a better look. There was some big pickup truck, but I couldn't see anyone inside of it. Nor did I see anyone outside of it. Maybe someone pulled over to help. I got out of the car and said, excuse oh, me, to no God. response. I walked closer to the truck just to confirm no one was inside. Then I walked back to my car. This was weird. I looked towards the trees on the side of the road. Maybe someone was pissing in the woods. I went back inside of my car and locked the door. This was just too weird. Suddenly, there was a tap at my window. I jumped. I looked to see a man looking down at me into the car, oh, no. smiling. I didn't do anything yet. He said, hey, buddy, need a hand? I Yo. lowered the window a crack and said, hey, I ran out of gas. The man said, that's quite the predicament. Step out and give me a hand with this real quick. Huh? When he said this, I thought he meant help him with a gas jug to fill up my tank or something, honestly. And so I stepped out of the truck and shut the door, oh expecting my. him to lead me to his truck. But he stood there, looked down at me because he was much taller, still smiling, and said, I need you to empty your pockets, please. It took me a second to process what he meant. I was literally a broke college student driving a piece of shit pickup truck. I wasn't about to get robbed of the only cash I had and my phone. 
I ran for it in the direction of the trees. I'm small but fast. <laughs> I turned around and saw he was chasing after me. Oh, that's crazy. Once I made it into the trees, I zigzagged all over the place until I seemed to lose him. Oh, and I crouched wow. behind a big tree to catch my breath. Oh, wow. I heard him approaching closer. I quieted my breath. I heard him say out loud, I'll kill you, you piece of shit. What? I don't know if he was just saying it out loud out of anger or if he wanted me to hear it, but I was too scared to move. Even after I heard his footsteps move away, I didn't move. In fact, I stayed in this position the rest of the night, eventually laying behind this big tree up until dawn. I went back over to the highway to my truck, and the truck behind me was gone. But my truck's doors were both open. I found that my glove box had been gone through and completely emptied of anything somewhat valuable. My flannel hoodie was also taken, which had something in the pocket, I'm sure. I finally managed to wave down a good Samaritan. He gave me a ride to the closest gas station. Wow. I bought a fuel can, filled it with gas, and the man brought me back to my car, where I filled my tank just enough to drive the truck to a gas station to fill up completely. Then I went straight home. Get rid of that this truck. This was a real-life learning experience for me, that there are bad people out there who will exactly. try to take advantage of you when you're in a vulnerable spot. For real, There man. are also good people, like the man who helped me. Yeah, man. I don't know about anybody that's trying to help. Um, yeah. Yeah, Blue Dude's a, a, a street thug or something. Somebody crazy, bro. At night, <clears throat> man, it's real. Like, nobody is usually going to stop at night. And if they do, you got to question it, like, who they are. Because, like, that guy, he he stopped and he was trying to, he was trying to rob him. So people that usually stop, I question... Okay, are they actually gonna help, or or are they trying to like do some mischief activity, like steal, rob you, or even try to kill somebody? Man, this is this is what people do out here. It's it's, it's unfortunate, but it happens. And he could and he could have got he could have got killed himself. He could have got killed, but he ran for it. He used his brain, and he got up out of there, which I'm glad he did. But still, he got to get rid of that truck. Get rid of the truck. I know it's probably easy to say that, but man, you gotta like get it, get get the gauge fixed at least. If you don't, if you don't get rid of it, could, is it possible to get the the gas tank gauge fixed? Because he need to get it fixed, man. Um, yeah, I, I would have not gone outside if I were him. I would have stayed in the car. Um, but it would be something to think about. Like, what if the guy breaks the glass and then trying to pull me out, whatever? Then, then we'll have to make a swift decision. But man, ah, that's crazy.